Well, I think we'll get started here. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Apologies for being uh, slightly uh, behind time, but we'll make it up. Um, I want to, uh, it's my great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Professor um, Peter Stadler, uh, who's the uh, head of the Department of Vascular Surgery and uh, Center of Robotic Surgery at uh, uh, Naham. I'm actually hospital in uh, Prague. He's going to talk to us about a very interesting uh, topic of uh, the application of robotic surgery to vascular surgeries. Thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me introduce uh, our experience in the field of uh, uh, vascular surgery. Da Vinci has been used in a variety of surgical disciplines, but the use of robot in vascular surgery is still relative unique. The Da Vinci system was installed at our institution in October uh, 2005 and between November 2005 and May 2014 totally 310 cases were performed. The table shows us most frequent and less frequent uh, operation. Uh, Iliofemoral, orthofemoral and triple A surgery represent most frequent uh, operation and uh, uh, for example, common iliac artery, aneurysm, splenic artery, aneurysm, uh, renal artery, uh, renal artery, aneurysm, uh, treatment, uh, celiac tongue deliberation, hybrid uh, procedure present less frequent uh, operation. Triple A surgery, orthofemoral bypasses, and iliofemoral bypasses represent 92% of all robotic vascular procedures. The picture shows us the patient's position and uh, detailed uh, position of trocars for abdominal aortic uh, surgery. Uh, standardly, we use six trocars for femoral bypasses and seven, one trocar more for uh, AAA surgery. The next schematic picture shows us uh, the line for uh, opening the posterior peritoneum and position column uh, and exposure of infrarenal aorta. The line uh, for opening the posterior peritoneum is on the left side, uh, left side of the aorta, uh, usually along along uh, side the corner, the left corner of the vein. We can perform uh, robotic uh, procedures using uh, combination laparoscopic and uh, robotic activity. I think it's very interesting, especially uh, during the start of the robotic uh, procedure for <coughs> training uh, <coughs> with the dissection of uh, big uh, vessels or full robotically. Actually, we perform procedures full robotically. Uh, construction of the intra-abdominal anastomosis uh, represents the most important utilization of Da Vinci system uh, and uh, the vascular anastomosis can be performed quickly and efficiently resulting uh, in a significant, significantly shorter climbing time. You can see uh, the standard uh, end to side uh, uh, anastomosis. We use the robot uh, for different parts of vascular surgery. Uh, the next videos show us uh, aortotomy uh, before uh, aorto bifemoral bypass and opening aneurysmatic sac uh, before replacement of uh, uh, abdominal uh, aorta. Aorto iliac thrombo thrombo with prosthetic patch is a uh, Another but very, very, but very rare application of the robot in vascular surgery, especially if it's impossible to perform angioplasty. Uh, video up show us uh, typical calcification and uh, prosthetic patch, and video uh, down show us uh, atherosclerotic uh, sludge and removing from uh, intraluminally before start of the central anastomosis. For triple A surgery, we use the robot uh, to internally control the remaining lumbar arteries after opening aneurysmatic uh, sac using free shoulder stitches. This is absolutely the same technique if you compare with open surgery. Uh, this is a uh, single stitch. You can see uh, remind, uh, backflow bleeding for lumbar, lumbar artery.
The table, uh, especially red color, show us the most important information uh, from our uh, patient and video show us uh, our first hybrid procedure, it was combination of the bifemoral bypass and hernia mesh repair. Uh, ten cases were converted, I mean ICU stay uh, 1.2 days, uh, 30 day mortality 0.3%, uh, secondary mortality 99.6%, uh, and we have seen two prostheses in infection. Uh, clamping time, uh, approximate, uh, mean clamping time uh, was uh, 49 minutes, but if uh, the shorter was uh, uh, around 20, uh, 20 minutes, especially for for orthofemoral bypasses, and the longest was uh, two hours. It, it was for triple uh, A. If we compare uh, bypasses and aneurysm, uh, one uh, short comment for, for video, this is our talk by iliac resection and you will see uh, left distal uh, uh, iliac anastomosis. If we compare bypasses and aneurysm, you can say that uh, clamping time is uh, uh, shorter uh, for bypasses uh, operation, uh, anastomosis time is uh, similar, Operating uh, time is uh, longer for, for aneurysm, of course, and blood loss is higher for aneurysm again. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me show you some trick and tip uh, during the uh, second part of the operation. Uh, the, this video shows us iliac anterior backflow bleeding uh, using control uh, <coughs> two bone catheters. Uh, this is uh, one of the rare operations, especially commonly at the aneurysm treatment by two grafts. Uh, it's necessary to perform two anastomosis, of course. <coughs> After creation of uh, central anastomosis, uh, during the AAA surgery, it's necessary to uh, install uh, pros uh, another prostatic clamps for a check. Uh, the central anastomosis, if it's, if it's everything okay, if not, it's necessary to install single single, single uh, stitch. This is very interest, interesting case. Uh, it was hybrid operation, uh, patient with uh, symptomatic type B dissection with heavy uh, stenosis of the right uh, renal arteries with the success of endovascular angioplasty and uh, we perform a robotic, uh, robot-assisted uh, thromboendoterectomy of right renal artery with ileo-renal bypass uh, uh, with continued implantation of thoracic stain graft. You can see PGV prosthesis and finalization of end-to-end uh, -end anastomosis with uh, right renal artery. And now uh, the control CT angiogram, ileo-renal uh, <laughs> bypass, and this is the implantation thoracic stem graft. Uh, Robot-assisted splenic artery aneurysm uh, treatment, very interesting, but again, very rare application, especially for big aneurysm. Uh, this case, it was double, splen uh, double uh, splenic artery ar aneurysm, uh, around six centimeter. Uh, we indicated uh, the patient for robotic surgery. After dissection, both part of uh, uh, splenic artery, uh, we perform exclusion of uh, aneurysm. This is the aneurysm. And next, end to end, uh, end to end anastomosis. The CD angiogram shows us the control, uh, control. Uh, CT angiogram with uh, without uh, uh, aneurysm. Robotic endolytic treatment uh, <coughs> in uh, error of endovascular therapy. Very interesting application. If uh, the patient has uh, uh, endolytic, you can see endolytic here, especially from lumbar arteries. You can use the robot for check all posterior part of the abdominal aorta and uh, clip or cut all visible visible uh, lumbar arteries. 
I would like to show you our most interesting application of the robot. It was a young woman uh, with Marfan and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome with big aneurysm of mammary artery. Uh, again, without success of endovascular uh, treatment, and uh, we had uh, two possibilities: uh, thoracotomy or try the robot. We chose the second one, and we used we used uh, four uh, four trocars, and uh, it was necessary. Uh, released adhesion uh, between left lung and big uh, aneurysm of mammary artery. Continue with uh, dissection of uh, very short uh, neck of the aneurysm, and after uh, after dissection of, of, of the neck, uh, it was a uh, couple of clips was uh, were implanted for the central and peripheral part of the of the aneurysm and to get the, this picture shows us uh, control CD angiogram and this is, uh, this is aneurysm, aneurysmatic sac with, without uh, blood flow. Celiac trunk uh, compression syndrome treatment, very, very rare application of the robot again. Uh, we perform uh, five cases totally. Uh, we can use the robot for uh, deliberation of celiac trunk. This is uh, common uh, hepatic artery. This is left gastric <coughs> hepatic, uh, left gastric artery, and uh, this is another interesting application of the robot. Ladies and, gen uh, and gentlemen, I would uh, like to say by end of my lecture that robotic system represent. Robotic system represents a real start of minimal invasive surgery in vascular uh, surgery operation. Robotic system offer truly many invasive aortic intervention with all of the advantage they bring. Triple surgery and femoral bypasses are now standard operation in robotic vascular surgery. It might, uh, it might uh, hospital, it our hospital, and robot assisted vascular surgery is possible, safe, and successful. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we, we had uh, we had uh, uh, 56 uh, experience with 56 uh, cases total laparoscopic surgery uh, before starting the robot, and especially myself, I had uh, seven years uh, laparoscopic general surgery uh, experience. I think it's a very imp a very important information because I think that a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of vascular and cardiac surgeon don't have experience yeah. in, in the field of laparoscopic and thoracoscopic surgery and maybe it's it's problem why uh, number of robotic uh, robotic cases is no too big and the second one was <coughs> how does that last short laparoscopic experience in terms of um, some of the statistics that you showed in asthmatic time clamp time mortality for instance yeah if if I remember about uh, about uh, my first uh, laparoscopic total laparoscopic left iliofemoral bypass, it is very actually very simple. Very simple. Eight hours clamping time around two and a half hours, and the patient stay in the hospital three weeks with compartment syndrome. Uh, uh, my colleague told me, oh, it's, it's uh, no good way, <laughs> it's, it's no minimal invasive, three weeks of in, in the hospital. But uh, it, it, it's experience. Uh, if I stopped uh, the, the program after the first experience for a couple of, a couple of weeks and uh, uh, discuss with colleague and, and restart again, and step by step, the, the clamping time was uh, were shorter, 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 and uh, by the end of the our laparoscopic era, 
uh, we performed triple A surgery in laparoscopy. But it was very, very select selected patient. But not for the robot. It's because the uh, robotic anastomosis is very uh, easy if you compare with with uh, classical laparoscopic surgery. With the the endoris technique, you can go everywhere by robotic uh, instruments. Is is I think it's you can you can uh, compare with open surgery with all advantages of minimal invasive surgery. It's the, the big point. Uh, fantastic <laughs> talk. Uh, really brilliant surgery, I've got to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, very impressed. Um, who would you not do this on? Are there any relevant contraindications uh, for the robotic approach? Sorry? Who, who, what patients would not oh. be suitable for the robotic what approach? What uh, you mean uh, indication for the robotic exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think at present time, a lot of uh, uh, hospitals around the world go endovascular only, especially United States, especially Australia, and especially, especially West, West Europe. But I think that if you go only, only strictly one way, no endovascular anywhere, it's no good idea. Because I think it's very important to have uh, alternative, alternative uh, uh, treatment. And uh, our strategy is open, endo and robotic or laparoscopy for, for small cases. And every patient is, is uh, rare. Every patient, we have patient, and uh, if we have relative healthy patient, and the case is possible for robotic surgery, indicated for robotic surgery. If we have non-healthy patient, a lot of comorbidities, uh, uh, be indicated for endo because the endo is is the best for, for the patient, but uh, sometimes it's impossible to perform uh, the case of robotically and be indicated of open, of course. Any other questions? Well, I have a, few, uh, a little question, but I suppose this will be addressed by Dr. Mena a bit later. Um, we will have a talk about anesthesiology for. Uh, esophagus surgery, but we had a nice case of uh, aneurysm of the internal mammar, and we, you were in a nice working open space. And what was the situation of the anesthesiologist in that case? Uh, in uh, mammar in ma internal mammar case. Yeah. It was it was uh, it was young young patient, no comorbidity. Selective intubation and uh, I suppose. Uh, I'm uh, not understanding. Did you deflate one lung and just selective, selective? Yeah, uh, selective intubation. intubation. Yeah, yeah, of course, it must be selective. Uh, it must be used the selective intubation. Yeah, it uh, is similar. If you uh, perform trap abdomen, it's necessary uh, uh, selective uh, selective intubate. And uh, the urologists want to say that you uh, do, did a fantastic job with this renal bypass. <coughs> Yeah, <laughs> ileorenal bypass. It's fantastic. It was ileo. Yes, uh, may, uh, sometimes uh, I, I got the question: Why ileo? Why not aorto? Renal bypass is short way because it was dissection and left uh, iliac artery was only one artery without that dissection. It was Could impossible you to have perform. Taken also the carotid artery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.